We now learn how to find the formula for the nth term of a linear sequence. Now, linear sequences all have a formula which looks like un equals to a times n plus b. And so, given the first few terms of a linear sequence, it's important that we know how to find the values of the coefficients a and b. So, let's go right ahead and work through a couple of examples to learn the method. As a first example, we need to find the formula for 3, 7, 11, 15, 19, and so on. When we say find the formula for this sequence, we mean find the formula that would allow us to calculate, say, the hundredth term of this sequence of numbers. Okay, now when we're faced with a sequence of numbers, the first thing we should always do is look at the differences between consecutive terms. Here's what I mean. We can see that from 3 to 7, we're adding 4. From 7 to 11, we're adding 4. From 11 to 15, we're adding 4. And from 15 to 19, we're adding 4 again. This highlights a very important fact. All of these differences are the same. In other words, the differences between each pair of terms is constant. This means that we're dealing with a linear sequence. And I'll just write that here. The fact that the difference doesn't change implies that we're dealing with a linear sequence, which in turn means that it must have a formula looking like un equals to a n plus b. Okay, now that we've established that, let's go ahead and learn a quick method for finding its formula. The method comes in two equations. The first is a is equal to the difference. The second equation is a plus b equals to the first term of the sequence, which is often just called u1. And those are the two equations. Now these two equations will be true for any linear sequence, meaning if you're working with a sequence and you see that it's always the same difference between the terms, then these are the equations to use. So let's go ahead and see how it would be done for this particular sequence. We have a equals to the difference. Well, the difference we're referring to here is this one, the difference between the terms. So that would be a equals to 4. And we also have a plus b equals to the first term. Well, looking at the sequence here, we can see that the first term is 3. So a plus b must equal to 3. But since we know that a is equal to 4, that turns into 4 plus b equals to 3. Now, subtracting 4 from each side of that equation leads to b is equal to 3 minus 4. And finally, we can state that b is equal to negative 1. Now that we have the values of each of the two coefficients, a and b, we can write the sequence's formula. And that would be un equals to 4n minus 1. And we're done. That's the sequence's formula. Let's go ahead and look at another example. Let's say we have to find the formula for the nth term of the sequence with terms 14, 11, 8, 5, 2, etc. All right, well, as we should always do, the first thing we look into is the differences between the terms. We can see that from 14 to 11, we're taking away 3. From 11 to 8, we're taking away 3 again. From 8 to 5, we're taking away 3. And from 5 to 2, we're still taking away 3. So we see here that we're always taking away the same amount. Or in other words, we're always adding negative 3 here. That means that the difference is constant. It doesn't change. So this sequence is linear. And I'll just add that. It's linear. Since it's a linear sequence, it must have a formula looking like un equals to a n plus b. And to find this formula, we use the two equations for linear sequences, which were a equals to the difference, and a plus b equals to the first term, u1. So for our sequence here, 
the difference would be negative 3. So we can write a equals to negative 3. And the first term we can see right away is 14. So the second equation becomes a plus b equals to 14. And since a is negative 3, that's negative 3 plus b equals to 14. Now adding 3 to each side of that equation leads to b equals to 14 plus 3. And finally, b is equal to 17. We now have both a and b, and so we can state this sequence's formula. And that is un equals to negative 3n plus 17. And we're done. That's how we find the formula for the nth term of a linear sequence. Okay, everyone, I really hope that helped. And if it did, please hit like on this video and even subscribe to our channel. That really does help us. See you soon.